Leicester nil, Manchester United won three consecutive victories for Eric Ten Hag. Back to back away victories, back to back clean sheets. KG, come on! What do you make of that? Come on, bro. My manager. I'm saying it right now, yeah. Arsenal, I'm ready. Again, I know AFTV are going to be there. I know they're going to be there. I will be there as well. I promise you, win, lose or draw, I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up, bro, because my team, I believe in the manager. I believe in the defence. This guy is building. You know when you talk about cojones? Yes. My managers, grapefruits. Bigger than that. Watermelons, mate. It's like, it's next level. Like, I don't know. He probably needs, like, an assistant just to carry him. You know what I mean? It's disgusting. It's levels. Like, I believe in... We have got a real manager, bro. Back to back. I know you're sitting there thinking, what, like, what, why are you so excited? Away from home. Again, we used to say, we used to go and clap the fans saying, you know what? Thanks for coming. Sorry for letting you down. You know that, that sheepish. Now again, over there, like, <laughs> it's different. I don't want to say it feels different. That's very dangerous. It is different. It is different. Why you know? is it different? Again, you've got to talk about great teams are built off great defence, right? I could come here and say, talk about how we, we weren't as fluid as we need to be, but then you're seeing moments where things we've never seen before. Delo makes that, that, there's that block. He gets, not, I won't say skinned, but he gets this, um, Barnes gets a better room. He gets back in there. Big again, like big slide across. <sighs> Martinez runs over. <gasps> Ran. <Varane. gasps> and it's like, we scored. And when a team that does that, that means they're so locked into defending. You're looking at Malaysia, he's looking all over the place. He's like, listen, I can't let my, I can't let this down. I don't want to be the failure within this team. So now you've got a back four. Um, De Gea is in there. It's, it's brilliant. It's good to see De Gea is clawing one out. Like, uh, you're talking about Madison. Again, we, we always criticise about the things that we hate. But De Gea makes a good save today. It's an important save. And then I think just organisation... And if you move forward, we can talk about Bruno. Actually, I'll, I'll, do, I'll make it like a terrible sandwich, right? So here's the bad part. Yeah? So now here you go is Rashford. Problem. Rashford was a problem today. He gets an assist, but as a number nine, it wasn't good enough. You know, it was like not looking after the ball the way you need him to. It's like, I worry about him leading the line. And then you see, as soon as you move him up to the left, fantastic. How do you remedy that then with Rashford? How does Eric Ten Hag fix that? You spoke about cojones. Yeah. How does his cojones yeah. so solve Great the Rashford? Grapefruits. How do, how do the watermelons, how does he figure out the Rashford situation? <laughs> it's a problem. It's a problem because I don't, obviously, I'm not a manager. I haven't got FA level one, anything. you Are you not? Actually, I've got level one, but I haven't got the, like, level two. And then I, I need the UEFA B to really say what our coach is doing, right? But then there's, He's seeing something from Rashford that I can't see. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, everyone's like, why is McTominay playing? Again, he's seeing things that, well, today we saw it today. But I can't see what he's enjoying about Rashford's game because Rashford's not giving us time to have reprieve, time to build up, you know. And it's not like an attack on Rashford. It's just he can't play as a, a number nine with back to go. When you, when you give the ball to Rashford with space to run into, he, gives, he lays it off perfectly. Again, those... It was like a Jekyll and Hyde um, S performance from Rashford, but that's just to talk about the what, what for me the one negative. So many more positives going forward, way better than the Southampton game. It's not the complete article, but there was moments today when we talked like little short passes, one touch football, getting out. De Gea, you know when we they say you can't do it. De Gea getting the ball, clipping it over. You know that that is. That is better. Yes, he went under in incredible pressure, but it's getting better. You know, there's Bruno today. I'm telling everybody, Bruno's our captain. Get behind him. Bruno, like, not, don't just focus on what he does bad. Bruno was good today. Bruno helped out. Delo, a lot. De Can't even find a man in the match, mate. Oh, I was going to ask you about a man of the match then. Mm. How difficult is there to pick? <laughs> How difficult is it to pick that? That man of the match. You've got Dallo, yeah. Tomenay yeah. involved in there as well. I mean, you could go that whole back four. Yeah. Who's the man of the match? Ericsson actually got it from Jermaine Genus, I, I think. think. It was, I think it was unfair. I think Jermaine Genus was just, um, I don't know what he's looking at. Again, because you would have, if it was me, again, Varane's, all, Varane's having big performances, you know. He's doing cleanup work. So again, the Wraith, 
You know what I mean? The, he's a different type of car where he's like, whenever like Martinez makes a mistake, and he doesn't make many, but today like there was it was, you know, bouncing off him and stuff like that. For Rand's always there just tuck in, clean up, it's out, right? But then the person that I have to give the credit to today, it has to be McTominay. Interceptions, blocks, just he was big today, played big, played strong. Um he was he gave us a bit like he gave us reprieve. There was moments in the game because we can just, again, he's the easy person to scapegoat, but we have to give players credit when they do well. He looks good. And Ericsson, that, even that relationship with Ericsson's building, but I don't want it to build too much because I'm, I'm ready for Casemiro. I am ready for Casemiro, but it's in the manager's time. Again, like, there's so much to be happy about. Arsenal, we're ready. We're ready. Arsenal, we're ready. I'm saying it. Arsenal, we're ready. Again, I don't. I can never fear Arsenal. It's not in my nature to fear Arsenal, and they can clip it. I can't. I I refuse to fear Arsenal. I refuse. It's it's not happening. We have to go. We're playing at home, and it's Arsenal, and it'll be so great to pop the bubble. I don't care how this ends. I will be on AFTV, and I hope I'm there celebrating. Listen, I love it if we beat them. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Who would you play then over Mc, uh, McTominay, Casemiro? You said you don't want actually McTominay and Ericsson to get the relationship too much. Yeah, because I'm waiting but, for the rule. But who starts? Who starts on Sunday then? Of McTominay course. or Casemiro? You've got to stick with McTominay. You've got to stick with him. Like until, like, until he does something wrong, you play McTominay. I don't mind Casemiro coming in off the bench. Again, Arsenal are quite fluid though. Arsenal, like, I've, been, I've watched them. They look good. They're quick. And you, you just hope to yourself, again, with the foreign players, with the players that are just coming in, it takes them a, a while to kind of understand the speed of the game. You saw what happened to Malassia and Martinez in the first game. And it's, it's like, bloody hell. You know what I mean? Brighton, they couldn't believe it. Now they're with it. So you, in the, today with Casemiro, some things he did well, some things he's like, he's losing the ball. And just the tempo, he wasn't in the tempo. Then he has to remember, he's not playing with Modric and Cruz. And... He quickly started to realize, oh, sugar, you look, don't have to take the ball. <laughs> the same, right? They're different types of players. So I would go, I would go McTominay. I'd put in, um, oh man, because Rash is injured. So it has to be Sancho out on the left. And then Starboy, give it to him. It's, it's Old Trafford under the lights, Ronaldo up front. And Ronaldo loves a goal against um, Arsenal. Ronaldo up front, obviously came on today. Yeah. Actually, I thought did pretty well. Yeah. You were said you. I'm surprised he's not starting. Yeah. Does he finally start at the weekend? He needs. He needs to start. The only thing is, he kind of thrived off that relationship that he built with. He built with Bruno and Rashford. He's getting the ball and it was just go. It was just action. Like I, I do love Sancho. It's the it's the fact that he wants to stop, cutting. He don't want to just go. He don't want to just like. You want to see him really commit, guys, and just be a problem. I want to see guys on yellow cards thinking, bloody hell, it's him again. Mm. And that's the one thing you can say is, yes, he's dangerous, but he doesn't commit you. And then I'll defend, like, as a, as a defender, yeah, let's go. I, like, I know you're going to slow it down. Someone should come over and help me out. We could deal with this. Against raw pace, again, I saw Eddie and Ketia. The guy's quick, like, and he's going to run at you. We, that's like, I'm not saying that Enketa is better. I'm just saying that danger, man, where you're going to move and Man United, we need to play fast. We're not like a good possession team yet. And that's coming. That's going to build. Finally then, what's your message for Arsenal at the weekend? Listen, yeah. I'm telling you right now, Arsenal, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in Old, Old Trafford settings. That's our home, bruv. And you, man, are going to be in the mud. I hope. Yeah. Yeah, it's Arsenal. I'm not afraid. Thank you. I like that. If you smell! <laughs> what Ten Hag is cooking?